G'day everyone, welcome back to Gordy's Gas Bags, episode four and really excited to be heading all the way to South Australia to catch up with the unbelievable uh, Nat, well Natalie Von Berto, for those of you that don't realise she got married and is now called Nat Vogue, by the way PS this is brought to you by my Corona bottle, um, but Nat, g'day, how are you going? I'm good thanks, how are you? <laughs> I'm, well, I'm going okay. Actually, I'm doing really well. I'm enjoying being home. What about you? Well, I've had my ups and downs, so I have to say. Um, two little kids, the two and a four-year-old at home um, all day, every day is sometimes challenging. Um, <laughs> see? On cue. That's, just, <laughs> that's exactly right, as long as you can hear me. <laughs> um, but anyway, we're, we're settled in now. I've... Uh, got the kids doing a few activities and now I'm trying to put my hand to school teaching. Do they, are they normally in daycare? Yeah, daycare and um, Maddie's at kindy. So um, Miller, my youngest, is having a sleep right now. So oh, the zen that's yeah. in our household because um, she doesn't like to sit for very long. Um, but we're lucky we've got a big backyard, so lots of outdoor activities happening here. How's the, weather, <laughs> the weather's good in Adelaide? Oh, yes. Thank God. Again, as this goes into winter, I think life might get a little bit harder again. So, yeah. um, but we're all good here and, you know, we're all healthy and that's all we can ask for, really. Yeah, good on you. Well, mate, to be honest with you, I thought when I touched base with you, I thought oh, I'd love Nat to come on. So for me, I'm going to put this out there. In your heyday, in your play day, for me and in memory, I reckon you were Australia's best defending centre court player. Right, like your defensive game in centre was. That's not to say your attacking game wasn't good. I don't mean that, but I reckon I always remember you as just an extraordinary pain in the ass defender when you played centre. Did you pride yourself on that? Thanks, Gordy. Yeah, I I did, and I guess I grew up um, playing wing defence, so that always helped. And my sister, who obviously played as well, Laura. We used to go out on the tennis court in our backyard and she would go behind the the back line of the tennis court and I'd stand in front of her and she would do dodges and I would um, track her oh, meticulously really? for hours on end. We had our dad with the netball throwing it in when she got free. But, you know, I think probably all that work that I did with her out on the tennis court was probably the starting point. And then um, playing wing defence, um, I guess I then, when I got shifted into centre, had a, a bit of a strength in that area as well. But I, I kind of loved the defence side of um, the game. And uh, I was lucky to play with Monia and Renee Hellinen or Ingalls now and all those fabulous wing defences and Selena Gilsonen um, as well. So they all helped me in the defence game as well. Tell me about your sister. Did you, did you get along or were there like, who was more competitive? And I mean, because the two of you went on and played for Australia and it's, it, it's one of the great family stories of our, of our netball, uh, for, you know, like um, fabric, isn't it really? Yeah, look, we were, I guess, you know, we were lucky that we were quite close in age and we certainly had our tiffs and she always, um, she always tells me that she taught me to catch a ball because basically she'd peg the ball at me and if I didn't catch it, it'd hit me in the face. So she taught me to catch, she reckons, and then um, and she reckons she failed because she caused this injury of mine. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, my finger. <laughs> she threw me a terrible ball, a ball in one game and I had to try and get between two defenders to get it and my finger got caught on their uniform. Oh. Ripped back, finger out of the skin and everything and look at it still. So I blame her for that one. Um, but we, I, I guess we were lucky. We were both quite sporty growing up. And then we used to, we had quite a big house when we um, lived, uh, when we grew up together. And we used to create all sorts of, um, I don't know, like little things where we'd go for bike rides and runs and then tennis matches and things like this. And it used to be super competitive. And Laura used to train heaps harder than me <laughs> in the early days. And then I'd waltz out and um, beat her in a run and she would be spewing for weeks because she'd done all this work. So I was lucky to have a little bit of more natural fitness than her. Um, but, she, will she watch? Oh, yeah. Was, you think she'll watch? I used to love it. I used to watch her go for a run, so I'm thinking, oh, as soon as it's my turn, I'm going to beat you. <laughs> and then <laughs> that contributed too, though, because, like, just having having a sibling that was playing the same sport and being so competitive, you probably just drove each other 
to your absolute yeah. best. Oh, I think we did. And look, I think her work ethic probably taught me, you know, whilst in my early days I might have sat back and watched, it certainly wasn't um, what I did in the later, or, you know, as I got a little bit older, yeah. um, when it got a bit more serious. But we definitely would have pushed one another. And I think despite playing sort of in the same areas, I think for mum and dad and for us, it was kind of lucky that at that point in time, it's quite different now, but there were specific positions that you played. And she played wing attack and I played centre. And so we never really competed for a spot, um, which was pretty lucky. Whereas now um, you're kind of expected to play two plus positions, really. Yeah. yeah. Let's go back and talk about uh, Diamond's days and in, in, in your heyday. Um, beyond just the absolute pride of putting on the green and gold, is there a moment for you that just stands out? Like what, what's, a, what's a really special moment that you had representing the country? Um, there are a few, like it's a pretty amazing, um, thing to do. And, you know, I think probably in hindsight now, even just being a part of the team and singing the anthem with the team is a huge highlight. Um, but really 2007 world champs where I got to play alongside Laura, um, yeah. in that one in New Zealand was a massive highlight for me. And then 2011, when I was able to captain the country, despite throwing the ball away in the dying seconds, you bought it up. I almost friend. lost the game. You, the you bought it up. I refused to bring it up. You bought it up. I think probably almost the heart attack that that gave me, and then the joy to win that one after, and you know, the pure relief that I felt I would have felt like it was my fault if we lost, yeah. I guess. So, yeah. um, that one as well was a huge highlight for me. Yeah. And um, were you all well behaved when you went on tour? Oh, always. You know us. Kath Cox, Rob McMahon, Liz Ellis. That's why I'm asking the question. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> well, I tell you, the celebrations after Singapore were pretty, pretty epic. Um, I think I was remember I was there, yes. I, I recall. Mm. I think it yeah, it was, Singapore yeah it was a lot of fun. Pardon? Started at the Singapore Cricket Club. That's, that's right. <laughs> and then I'm not sure where we ended up, but somewhere on tables, I think. <laughs> yeah. I, look, I actually do recall the entire evening, but I'll, we'll leave that for the after hours version of this. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, back, in, back in your day, coaching wise, because you, you, you would have come through, you've, you've had Margaret. I mean, you've had some pretty phenomenal coaches uh, mm -hmm. across your time. Tell me about Margaret and Gove. Well, she's so, uh, Marg Angrove was probably um, one of the main starters of my career, I guess, and um, mainly through fear. <laughs> as, a, as a junior, I was so scared of her. She was the scariest woman of like you'd ever come up against. Um, and then it's funny now, I know her obviously really well over the years and she's soft as butter. So it's, I don't know how she used to put that persona on or whether, or whether she's soft in her, in her age, but... You just did what she said, basically. You know, like she was someone that knew what you knew what was needed and pushed you to get it. And you did nothing but I never spoke back or did anything. I just did what she told me to do, which um, uh, was kind of a good way to learn, I guess. And um, she taught me a lot, probably about a lot about that work ethic, I would say. Um, and you know, my years with her now, she would have underpinned all the stuff, uh, all my skills. But that for me is a bit. Um, uh, fuzzy it was a few years ago now <laughs> but it was more really what she taught me of how to how to train hard and what is expected of a player and um you know how to hold yourself on the court I guess how much of that has rubbed off on you because obviously now you sit inside the Adelaide Thunderbirds hub at Suncorp Super Netball level so you've got your coaching hat on now do you feel like and and, the, and I can say this for myself you know you look back at all the coaches that have had touch points with you over the time and some of the most extraordinary qualities in coaches kind of infiltrate you as a coach. I mean, you still have your own persona and character, but have you found that? Like, do you feel at times you find yourself out there coaching and saying things and you're like, oh, that was Marg. <laughs> yeah, I do. But probably Norma Plummer sometimes comes through a bit in me. <laughs> she coached me um, for many years, really, at the AIS and then at the Diamonds. So she obviously sometimes... Um, comes across in me and Jane Woodlands. I was just going to say, go back well. to Plum, go back to Plum. What's, what's something that you would do that you think Plum did? Mm, I, I think really with um, Norma, 
what I loved about her coaching <laughs> was how hard I love I loved how hard she pushed us in these footwork drills and they're, they're these box drills we used to do and I can't help it now but I do them for the girls sometimes and I feel like laughing I do actually laugh sometimes because I think oh my god I know how bad these are and I can see them puffing and I think oh Norma would have felt like this when she was making us blow a casket like this so all I think about is laughing um at these poor old girls who are killing themselves because of these Norma drills that I still kind of bring out every now and again I reckon, um, I reckon there are athletes around the country right at this particular point in time who have had the experience of Norma Plummer's cone drills. They'll know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> That's right. So I, I do sometimes still bring them out and um, mainly because I just, you know, I, lo I love them in a way, you know, that love-hate relationship. Yeah. So I'm kind of bringing it back. Um, so I definitely feel that and I don't know, I try, I, I guess as a specialist coach, I don't have to be quite as serious sometimes as the other coaches um and so I do try and uh, I don't know I try and um make it a little bit more light-hearted at times and because it can be pretty stressful um mm. the training sessions and the training environment so I'd like to be there for the players um that they can talk to me but um I also you know I I think something that was lost along the way of the Thunderbirds a little bit was um, the ex the expectations of training and the standard set. And so that's something that I've always prided myself on as a player and I really am trying to uh, bring some of those um, expectations back along with Tanya as well. Um, she's really keen to make sure that we're hitting those marks a bit better than what we have been previously. Yeah, and nice to see two South Australians in amongst it, you know, leading the way for Adelaide, which is great. Hey, if you looked at the league at the moment, and I know and I know and understand obviously you've got your your pink colours on, but across the board, uh, a player that just stands out for you in the league that just leads the way. Shamira Sterling. <laughs> I agree. She's amazing. Like honestly, she's an amazing athlete and we're really lucky that we get to see her train. Um yeah. <clears throat> weekly or daily almost um, because she can do things that no one else can do and she does them all the time and we think oh, we don't know how do you teach that you can't teach it she just has it basically and really good um, athlete now <laughs> she is she wants to look like you know she wants to learn but we have to adapt because she can do things that you know we can't necessarily, we, we can't necessarily teach the younger players to do you yeah. know as a de as a defense coach you never tell your player to stand behind and yeah. get an intercept over the top do you but she mm -hmm. can do it so uh we have to kind of adapt what we do to um allow her to flourish how she's flourished and uh, i know she's having some fun with the jamaican girls um in perth at the moment yeah. so um can imagine what what's going on around uh with those girls having some great on dance offs and that type of thing so she brings so much character as well as what she actually does when she's out on the court so for me she's she's definitely the standout yeah and i, I agree with you with the character g don't it, it's so important that we have those characters and we let them shine and flourish and sometimes they're going to step outside the boundaries of what people think are the norm but that's just extending our boundaries isn't it and i love i love that shamira week in week out just pushes that boundary slightly both on and off the court so uh, my hat stays on but goes off to her for that hey um matt what um what's happening for you from a covid 19 perspective i'm always i want to check in with everyone how are you guys how's maddie can how's you just hear what's happening? happening in the background <laughs> I need to help with Peter Rabbit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> come, come over here, darling. Oh, she's sorted, I think, hopefully. Oh, um, what's happening with us in terms of training or just Yeah, no, life? just you and the family. Is everyone well and healthy? You're coping? You're yeah. opening the wine yeah, well, well. more used than usual? <laughs> <laughs> we're all pretty well and healthy. Lots of, like, I'm actually exercising way more than... I was beforehand like you know like sometimes you think oh wow it's amazing how busy your life becomes and how full it is and things go out the window and now I'm like getting the kids to do exercise in the afternoon so out I am out I go again and yeah, um, yeah. so we're just I don't know we're just lucky that we live in a place that we can still get outside at times mm -hmm. um, 
got some big ovals and things like that. So that's keeping us sane. Um, and then it's a real shame that netball's been put on hold because, you know, no, I know that I, I'm in the inner sanctum, but we were looking pretty good. So we're excited for this year to come. We've got some great um, great recruits in Lanise as well. Yeah. And Jadine's come back from... Um, her break looking fitter than ever and you know we were hitting some really good straps so it's quite disappointing that that's been on pause but hopefully not for too long and and really here we're just wondering how long is this going to go on for because you know three weeks ago our lives look very different yeah, <laughs> who great. knows what another three weeks holds you're right isn't it and it's funny to think when you say three weeks it actually just kind of makes you sit up a little bit and think the whole world changed in the quickest period of time, I want, and I'm the same. I just had that exact conversation. I wonder where we'll be in three weeks' time, and then another three. It'll be, it's a fascinating time for everyone. But I mean, I guess the key is, and I'm hoping that everyone out there can take just something really um, valuable out of this experience and carry it with them beyond our COVID-19 once in a hundred year experience. Because you know, at the moment, I keep saying I've just come back from my daily walk and you know, the teddy bears in the windows, it's just beautiful and families out walking and you kind of think, you know, maybe this is how life is should be a lot more of. And so I realise there's a reality to that, but I hope that we can all just take a little bit of this experience from its, the positive side and, and carry it on into our, into our daily lives. I think that's really important. Yeah, and I think something so important for me has been that I've been really busy trying to work and do netball and do all this stuff and often I'm trying to get the kids to bed so I can work in the evening and it's been really nice to just go, oh, actually, what was I doing? Yeah. But, you know, that's just ridiculous. Let's just enjoy the kids. They're growing up so fast. Maddie's at school next year and... Um, Yes, and like you said, the teddy bears, we've got ours packed with teddy bears and rainbows out the front and just doing that community stuff is really fun and it's just been really nice to dial back. And I know it does get harder when things get busier again, but it's, you know, if you can take something out of this, um, that's something that I'll hope to take into the future. Yeah, good on you. Now, Nat, I'm not sure if you've seen the previous episodes, but you don't leave this without karaoke time. Oh, God. So have you got a favourite karaoke song? What's your go-to song? Prep for that. What's my go-to? Um, uh, probably used to be Bon Jovi, Living on a Prayer. Oh, <laughs> I'll, be honest, I'll be honest with you, Nat. That is a tough one to sing. Well, I know. I, I don't know if I can sing it. <laughs> when it goes right up to the top. So... As we say goodbye to you and say a massive thank you for joining us on Gordy's Gas Bags, can you take us out with a little bit of John Bon Jovi's Living on a Prayer? Okay. Here we go. Whoa. How do I get this out? Do I to say, whoa, Living on a Prayer? <laughs> you need to help me. All right, hold on. Go um, again? Are we going straight to the chorus? Yeah, let's go to the chorus. Okay. Whoa, we're halfway there. Halfway there. Oh. Living on a prayer. How's that? Take my I don't know the rest hand. of the words. No more. Take my hand. I'll make it something I swear. I usually swear. Just oh, living on a prayer. See, there you go. There you I go. could just hear that raspiness coming out in your <laughs> voice then. It started to get a little bit of that passion. I can imagine. So, Nat, massive thanks to you. Really good to catch up, actually. It's yeah, great to catch what up. I'm loving. Too. You know, we all sort of. We're in the background, but we don't often get a chance to sit down and have a chat. So all the very best to you, Jace, and the kids. Uh, Thank and you. Stay safe. And we'll see you hopefully you before the end of season 2020 and when the netball, as we dearly hope Suncourt Super Netball hits our oh, TV yes. screens and back on the courts uh, sooner rather than Hopefully soon. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Thank Gordy. my friend. Bye. See you later.